An evil spirit force on Earth today is crushing the nations. Learn how to protect yourself from this wicked being and how to overcome him. Next on The Key of David with Gerald Flurry. Greetings, everyone. Many people in this world scoff at Satan the devil of the Bible, and others don't know much about the devil, and only a few, a little flock, really understands the devil of your Bible. And if you look at Isaiah 14, it says there that he made the earth to tremble. Satan made the earth to tremble, and he shakes kingdoms. So he does have power. He shakes empires. And we need to be aware of that because he is the God of this world, 2 Corinthians 4 and verse 4. But it also says he is the crusher of nations or empires. It says he did lay low the nations, enslave the nations. And what, what tremendous power this being has. No wonder he rules this world. And yet, how many people really do know that? So how can we be free from this powerful monster, which is what it amounts to? How can we be free? How can we face and deal with him? Let's read James 4 and verse 7, and this is how we protect ourselves if we really want protection from him. Verse 7, Submit yourselves therefore to God, resist the devil, and he will flee from you. He will flee from you if you just submit to God. Now, that's quite a power that God gives you and me. And he says, now, look, if, if you will do that, he will flee from you. <laughs> and that, that sounds strange after you think about those scriptures I read to you just a, a moment ago. See, we don't have to fear Satan the devil. And if we really understand this power of God and use it, we can really change our lives and, and everything we do uh, to make them much better. Notice Revelation 13 and verse 1. Revelation 13 verse 1 is about a political power that has dominated human history. Here's what it said, And I stood upon the sand of the sea and saw a beast rise up out of the sea, having seven heads and ten horns, and upon his ten horns ten crowns, and upon his heads the name of blasphemy." This is that frightening world power, and here's what I wrote in our booklet about the beast power. This beast represents the Roman Empire, which started in 31 B.C., well over 2,000 years ago. This world ruling empire absorbed all the empires that preceded it and occupied their territory. And goes on to tell you how the, that was the head of the lion, Nebuchadnezzar, and then uh, that was the Babylonian Empire, and then the, the bear is the Persian Empire, and the swiftness and cunning cruelty of the leopard symbolized Alexander's Greco Macedonian Empire. God used a beast to describe the first three beast powers that rule the world, but when he got to the Roman Empire, he had to combine all those animals together and make it one monster. There was no dreadful beast on this earth that God could use to define the Roman Empire. Quite a power over the world, and everybody knows a lot about, or at least some of that history. Verse 3 says, And I saw one of the heads, as it were, wounded to death. It was wounded to death. That was 476 A.D. when the Roman Empire was defeated. But then it was healed. Verse 3 says, The world wandered after the beast, the whole world, because it controlled the whole world. Now, this dreadful beast is still there, and it's uh, today we're in the seventh and final resurrection of that Roman Empire, or Holy Roman Empire, it's called today. Verse 4 says, And they worshiped the dragon, which gave power unto the beast, and they worshiped the beast, saying, Who is like unto the beast? Who is able to make war with him? It says that 
They actually worship the dragon. They worship Satan, the devil, in a special way here, more than any other beast of the Bible. This one predominates everything and all of the powers like that. It's the superpower of superpowers. Now, that's a European power, and God says we need to be aware of it, and it's going to come on the scene and last three and one half years, and then God is going to smash it. And because of the evil that is being done, it's about ready to burst on the world scene right now. And you can look at Revelation 12 and verse 9, the preceding chapter, and it says that he deceives the whole world. The whole world. And he's the God of this world. 2 Corinthians 4 and verse 4. Now let's go back in history after the first world ruling beast, Nebuchadnezzar, or the Babylonian Empire, and we'll look at the prince of the kingdom of Persia. If you look at Daniel 12 and verses 4 and 9, it says Daniel is only a book for this end time. Only for this end time. So, we need to know what it says about this Satan the devil. So, and this was all prophesied 2,500 years ago, a long time, and yet it's only for today. And now God has revealed it, and you can understand it because it's here for this last end, it says, the very last one. So, we have three archangels, uh, Michael, Gabriel, and Lucifer was a, an archangel until he rebelled. So now there are only two, and notice what it says in Daniel 10 and verse 13. In Daniel's prophecy, Gabriel is recorded as saying, But the prince of the kingdom of Persia withstood me one and twenty days. <laughs> Here God was uh, giving this prophecy to Daniel, and, uh, and it, it was delayed like twenty-one days. And Gabriel had to call for Michael to get some help to overcome the prince of the kingdom of the Medo-Persian Empire, is what it, what it was called. Let me quote a paragraph of our booklet. The kingdom of Persia. Why is Satan called the prince of the kingdom of Persia? The kingdom of Persia in this prophecy is the world-ruling Medo-Persian Empire, which has been written about at length in history books. Satan is called the Prince of Persia because he had that much control over the world ruling empire. He controlled that empire. Now, how many people understand that? Verse 13 it says, And behold, Michael, one of the chief princes, came to help me, for I had been left alone there with the kings of Persia. So here they uh, were giving this prophecy to Daniel about the end time. Michael had to come and help Gabriel to overthrow Satan the devil. That's how much power he has. Of course, when he fights, he has one third of the angels, the fallen angels or the demons, with him. So think about that as a powerful army which Satan the devil has. Quite an army. Then Daniel 10 and verse 14 it says, Now I have come to make you understand what will happen to your people in the latter days, for the vision refers to many days yet to come. See again, they had to wait 2,500 years, or we did, to finally understand what is in the book of Daniel, because Daniel himself didn't know what was in it. But he knew what he wrote, and he passed it on down to us in Bible prophecy. So God has revealed it to us today, and we can prove that to you. But think about this, that if you're going to conquer the devil, you're going to have to fight the devil and all that he does to try to, to conquer you. As this verse makes clear, Satan was not also called Prince of Grecia at that time. 
This is referring to Alexander the Great, the Greco-Macedonian Empire, who was about to come on the scene. Satan hadn't yet gotten control of Alexander, but he did later get control of Alexander, and、uh, he got to him. And Alexander died at the age of 33 in a drunken debauchery. So, God. Allows Satan to get control of men if they just give themselves over to him, and he's also going to get control of this last beast power that is rising on the scene in Europe right now, and it's going to Satan is going to get control of the leader of that empire. Some amazing prophecy that we really do need to understand. Notice Ezekiel twenty-eight and verse twelve. Son of man, take up a lamentation and upon the king of Tyrus, and say unto him, Thus says the eternal God, You seal up the sum full of wisdom and perfect in beauty. Now, as I wrote, this is an interesting verse because it starts out talking about a king, and then it starts talking about a being full of wisdom and perfect in beauty, and also being in the garden of God. And that couldn't be a man. That that was the way it was with Lucifer. He's talking about Lucifer, who became Satan, the devil. Now, he's also saying that Satan possessed. It, it started with the king, and it, and it ended up talking about Satan, the devil. He was possessed by the devil. Do you think that can happen today? And imagine the the power that those men have as Satan、uh, possesses them. I'll tell you, it makes them a a super superpower if they have、uh, a lot of military armaments. But he had been in the garden of God. Verse fourteen: You are the anointed cherub that covers. That was Lucifer. That covered God's throne, and I have set you so. You were upon the holy mountain of God. You have walked up and down in the midst of the stones of fire. See what did he cover? He covered the throne of God, and he he was there watching God for who knows how long, and learning from God. And then God gave him control of the entire earth with one third of the angels, and then they. At first, we're doing fine, and the angels were very joyful in declaring that. But Satan rebelled and took the one third of the angels with him, and a lot of trouble developed. Notice verse fifteen: You were perfect in your ways from the day that you were created, till iniquity or lawlessness was found in you. Lawlessness—that's what that word means. Satan is lawless. You see men being lawless today. Well, if they are in a passionate way, well, you need to realize they have a real problem in、uh, dealing with Satan, the devil. We have to beware of of this powerful being. God has allowed this to test us. And help us to build character, so we can enter into His family. Christ had to come to this earth to to sacrifice Himself in in a way that you can't even describe. It so it was so powerfully evil, and yet He qualified to pay for our sins by sacrificing Himself. And now today we have this opportunity to enter into God's family ourselves. And if we enter in before Christ returns and give ourselves to God and do His work, we will be able to sit on the throne of David and declare this message to the entire world alongside Jesus Christ Himself. What a promise God has made to these first fruits who come out of this world and do God's work! But it's just a little flock, not a huge flock. Verse sixteen. By the multitude of your merchandise, they have filled the midst of you with violence, and you have sinned. Satan just fills the earth with violence. Do you see violence in this world? Do you see violence in our cities in the United States? Oh, do we ever! The God of this world. 
fills the earth with violence, not just the U.S., but the entire world. This is that being that was the covering carried over God's own throne. Imagine what this being learned from God and then turned against Him. Verse 19, it says, All they that know you among the people shall be astonished at you. You shall be a terror, and never shall you be any more. You're going to be a terror to this world. And then God is going to destroy you, so you'll never be a problem ever again. He's the world's number one terrorist. How many people really believe that? <laughs> Look at what's happening in this world. It's getting much more terrorized every day, frighteningly so. What is happening on this earth? Well, something really special is happening. It's exciting to be alive at this time in the world because so much is happening and 90% of the prophecy of God is being fulfilled today in this last end. Now, Isaiah 14, well, I'll just read parts of this. Satan was rebelling against God and he said, well, he was not only going to get himself over the angels, but he says, I will ascend above the heights of the clouds. I will be like the Most High. He not only conquers empires, he had the audacity to try to overthrow God Himself in the past. And, he, and he's, he's done it again in this end time, and God cast him to this earth, and he and all those demons are confined to this earth today. Can you imagine what's, uh, why we're having these problems in this world? And he concludes by saying, Is this the one that made the earth to tremble? That's what I'm talking to you about today. Satan makes the earth tremble. That's the kind of power he has, that he did shake kingdoms. He shakes this world, and he conquers empires, and he even challenges God Himself, if you can imagine that. The crusher of nations, enslaved enslaves other nations and empires. See, but why, you see, is God confining them here? Because they have this, their, their last rebellion here on earth, and it's going to be horrible and the worst problems ever we faced on this earth. And we need to understand that. God loves us, and He wants us to avoid catastrophes. But that, those powers that are rising in Europe, or that power, is not going to be our friend. You can be sure of that. And when God cast him out of the heavens, the heavens rejoiced just to have him gone and out of the way. And we're going to be rejoicing that way very shortly. And in a tiny few years, where it's going to be over. And I mean, all of this violence is moving quickly. And we need to be ready to face these terrible problems. But if you can just look at this European power that's going to rise, and every indication is it's going to be more powerful than China and Russia, and how could how could that be possible? Well, it's because they they worship this Satan, the devil, as no other. Entity does, and it gives them a special power that they're going to become the superpower of superpowers on this earth. That's what your Bible says. He is the number one superpower that's coming on the scene, and people are just totally unaware of Bible prophecy, it seems. In Genesis 1 and verse 2, I won't turn there, but it I'll just paraphrase it. When he was cast down to this earth, it says, And the earth was without form and void, and darkness was on the face of the deep. Well, what do you know? The earth would have been destroyed. He also destroyed the face of the universe. Does he have power? Look at the universe. That's not the way God created it. It was good, very good, when God created it and structured well and quite beautiful. 
Satan not only destroyed the earth, he destroyed the face of the universe. And look what God says in Romans 8 and verse 22. It says, For we know that the whole creation groans and travails in pain together until now. And he's talking about the universe. The universe. Here, here he's saying, Look, uh, the whole universe, he, he's uh, just really personifying the universe. But he says, The universe is just groaning in pain to be freed by the sons of God, along with Jesus Christ and God the Father. That is a wonderful, wonderful truth that we need to be thankful about. But I'll just paraphrase a few verses here. Satan also destroys churches. Even most of God's own church in this end time He's destroyed. Daniel 8 and verse 9 says, talks about the little horn, verse 9, Antiochus Epiphanes. There's going to be a type of him over that Roman Empire that is rising on the world scene right now. You can go on to see in verse 10 where it talks about the host of the stars. In other words, there's an army of angels God has, and also Satan has an army of demons, and now he also has an army of God's own church. Ninety-five percent of them that just capitulated to the devil. Now that's a sad, sad time and the worst crisis on this earth today. The very worst because 50% of those people are going to lose their eternal lives. 50% will repent and, and God will uh, save them in the Great Tribulation, the worst time of suffering ever on this earth. It defines that host here for Satan, and he has especially organized, he's organized for war, soldiers, army. He has his army as well, an army of demons to fight against the army of angelic beings. Verse 12 says, And an host was given him against the daily sacrifice, which is the work of God, the reason of the transgression. And here, Satan the devil in this end time, momentarily for a few years, a few tiny years, destroyed the very work of God, not the church, but the work of, that it was doing. And it goes on to say, and it cast down the truth to the ground, and it practiced and prospered. It just cast truth to the ground. That's what this church leader did. And there's going to be a political leader that's going to do the same thing. We have to understand those prophecies, and we can certainly explain them to you. Verse 13, the host is trodden underfoot because of the rebellion. And you need to write for our book on raising the ruins if you want to know all about that. It will explain all of it to you, and it is a large book. And we'll send it to you, and it costs you nothing. But here, He's talking about what started with Antiochus Epiphanes in the second century B.C., and it goes on to talk about uh, this last Antiochus or this last leader of the Roman Empire is is uh, it's, he's going to have all this power, but it's not by his own power. It says in verse 24 of Daniel 8, it's not by his own power; it's by the power of the devil. And it's right here in this end time, and we're facing it, and God says in verse 25 that He's going to smash them to smithereens very shortly. Thank God for all of that. Until next week, this is Gerald Flurry. Goodbye, friends. All our literature is available free of charge at no cost or obligation to you. Request Overcoming Satan and a Bible lesson about angels and demons. Order now. The preceding program was a paid presentation of The Key of David, brought to you by the Philadelphia Church of God.